enjoying your best life, wearing eyelashes that are too long. I don't know why people are doing that. I think that's a new style or something, but no. So you are not going to be off of probation early. So. All right. Who is the state on Oscar Martinez? It's unauthorized use evading. Oh, I call your name three times and you appear <laughs> in my mind. All right. So let's start with discovery issues. Which case is there a discovery well, issue? Judge, we're here on the uh, murder charge. Okay. Not the UN. All right. So is there a discovery issue on the murder case? I think we're coming back on Monday for discovery, actually. Okay. Um, so you're just here for a bond today? We're here for a bond. Today. All right. And uh, normally we're sending cases for bond to Judge Nahara, but I know this was specifically set in this court for this day. So State, are you prepared to proceed on the, the motion for the bond? Perfect. Okay. All right. Court is calling 2022 CR 4932B, State of Texas versus Oscar Martinez. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Jason, to your hand, Your Honor. For the defense? Michael DeLeon for the state, Your Honor. And are you Mr. Martinez? Yes, sir. Nice to meet you. All right. Off the record for a moment. Counsel? Counsel? We're on the record. So if you want to speak to your client, that's okay. If you want to speak to your client, they'll have to be moved to that end. But I can't have people speaking behind the court reporter. All right. We're back on the record. Uh, Defense, you filed a motion to reduce bond? Yes, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Martinez Bond, he's been currently locked up for the past year in Bear County Jail. Bond's currently set at $200,000. Um, we, he's charged with murder, uh, essentially as a party, Your Honor. What we're going to be asking for uh, to get to the very end is that we're going to ask for a reduction down to $80,000. Uh, the court knows that the purpose of a bond reduction, uh, a bond is to secure the defendant's appearance in court. Mr. Martinez here is uh, 20 years old. This happened when he was 19. Essentially, Your Honor, to give you a brief synopsis, he, he along with four juveniles, were in an SUV. Apparently, the evidence shows that there was a, an attempt to rob a drug dealer of drugs, money, or both. Okay. Um, during that incident, Apparently, there was a shootout between a juvenile who was in the SUV with my client and the unknown drug dealer, okay? Because of that, there were two, de two deceased people. One, the juvenile who got out to confront the drug dealer and a complete innocent bystander who was in his home and a bullet went through that uh, um, shootout to the neighbor's home and a uh, citizen was killed, okay? Okay. Um, I'll briefly say that at no time in looking at the evidence, there's no evidence that my client ever possessed a gun, had shot a gun, any witnesses to show that he was part of this beyond being part of uh, at most a robbery attempt, okay? Um, for Mr. Martinez, uh, he does have a job if he gets out, Your Honor. He does have a mother and a father, stable home life. He will live with his parents. Um, he has a job as a foundation repair with Baird Foundation, B-A-I-R-D. Uh, he's been doing that work for about almost two years. Um, if he gets out on bond, he'll be appropriately going to that work. Uh, we, we believe GPS would be completely appropriate in this type of case. Uh, I've talked to Mr. Martinez. If you drug test him today, Your Honor, he's going to come out clean. Um, I hope so. You would imagine so. <laughs> but he will come out clean, Your Honor. He, he's done no drugs while in jail. Um any type of curfew, any type of uh, uh, conditions the, the court wants to impose on him, we believe that an $80,000 bond will be sufficient to return him back to court and uh, address these charges in a timely manner. He has been locked up for over a year, uh, and I believe that an, an $80,000 bond is sufficient to return him back to court and to face uh, the charges, um, whatever those charges might be down the road. Great. Oh, Judge, i almost concur with everything that Mr. Delio mentioned. But however, the one of the major things that maybe missing is that this is this this short of a capital murder. Uh because like uh, Del uh Mr. Delio mentioned this uh they were uh at a drug deal possibly and trying to in a sense steal, rob or aggravatively uh rob a individual 
that they did have a shootout with, and both sides were shooting at each other. Uh, and during that course of that, uh, one of the defendants, co-defendants, was killed. Uh, and then another person across the street was killed. But the fact remains is, is that a $200,000 bond upon something like a capital murder is very, very appropriate, if not low. And for a murder of this type, Your Honor, I believe that $200,000 is an appropriate uh, bond amount. Plus, even after this murder, uh, he picked up additional felony cases of a UUMB uh, and a misdemeanor case, Your Honor. So in the community sa uh, safety standards, I believe that $200,000 is appropriate. All right, Mr. Uh, DeLeon, it's your motion, so I'll give you last argument. Uh, I agree with almost everything Mr. Garahan said, Your Honor, as well, because uh, this would be appropriate, but factually, looking at this specific defendant, um, the evidence is not going to be there, I believe, for the state uh, to show that he was um, more than just a party to a robbery, and the state doesn't have the uh, alleged gunman um, who was being robbed. Um, the last thing I would say, Your Honor, is just in case, hypothetically, we thought that Mr. Martinez was shooting a gun factually, and it'll take 10 minutes to go through all that, but I will just sum it up. Factually, if Mr. Martinez was firing a gun, there's no evidence that he, he, would, be, he would be shooting in the complete opposite direction of the innocent, innocent uh, 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 citizen who was shot, and um, his associate, juvenile, who was killed, he was shot in the face. Factually, it would make no sense for the defendant to have shot his juvenile friend in the face because the juvenile should have been completely facing the opposite direction. So just factually, there is no evidence that's going to show that my client uh, had a gun, shot a gun, and even if he did, he wouldn't have caused these two deaths. Okay. All right, and I do show that this is set for discovery as well. So I'm going to give you all, uh, after I make my ruling, I'm going to give you all one more discovery setting, uh, and then the state will be required to tend an offer. So I'm going to reset this for 45 days. Ms. Ferguson, can I have a 45-day reset? Uh, yes, I'm and this is going to be for a uh, discovery, and state at that time, you'll need to make an offer. Yes, yes. June 22nd. All right, so we're going to come back on June uh, 22nd. Uh, Mr. Martinez, your counsel made an excellent argument for why your bond should be reduced, but I have to look at everything in totality. Uh, I am going to die, deny the motion for the bond reduction. I'm going to order full GPS and I'll waive the GPS fees. And we'll see you back on June 22nd, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Are we ready on Mr. Guzman? Court is calling 2022 CR 11474W, State of Texas versus Destiny Argumento. Could I have the parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel Escobar for the State of Texas. Defense? Cheryl, Cheryl Patterson for the defense. All right. And are you Destiny Argumento? And no, ma'am. Well, Amanda, Destiny yes, Argumento. All right. I'm showing you what's entitled Motion to Revoke. Uh, I'm sorry. Judge, really quickly, sorry to interrupt. Uh, defense and I had spoken. I think defense had filed a motion for competence and email. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we wanted to approach on. Ah. So where are we on the competency? I don't, I, I filed the motion. I don't know that anything has happened. All right. When was the motion filed? Uh, I believe it was early part of last week. Oh, they're right. Okay. Thank you. All right, so it's been referred uh, to magistrate's court. So, uh, Ms. Ferguson, I need to reset on this. Can you let the magistrate know that she doesn't need an informal inquiry, that yeah. she just needs an evaluation? Your Honor, we'd actually, uh, in speaking with the prosecutor and in, with my client, we'd actually like to withdraw that motion. Um, we feel that she just did not understand uh, the questions and was very nervous that day. Okay. All right. We're on the record then. Are you uh, Amanda or Destiny Argamata Meadow? Yes, ma'am. Can you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand. Do you know uh, who your attorney is? Yes, ma'am. Who is your attorney? It's hard to pronounce her last name. Okay, what's her first name? Sorry. Can you point to your attorney? Who is your attorney? 
All right. Have you had a chance to discuss her and discuss your case? Yes, ma'am. What are you on probation for? Um, I'm not the right to use a vehicle. All right. And who is the prosecutor in this case? Um, I am. No. Who is actually um, trying to prove that you violated the conditions of your probation? Excuse me, I don't understand. All right. How far did you go in school? In ninth grade. Okay. All right. Do you, um, you're on probation. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You understand? You told me you're on probation for an auto- authorized use of a vehicle? Yes, ma'am. What is your range of punishment? It was um, two years of probation and parenting classes. All right. If I were to send you to prison or to the state jail facility, how much time could I give you? It was two years. Okay. So um, with regards to this motion to revoke? Yes, ma'am. Who has to prove to the court that you didn't do what you were supposed to do on a motion to revoke? Myself. I'm sorry? Myself. Yeah. Okay. okay. I think she may need an evaluation. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. So this is going to be set for our evaluation. Ms. Ferguson, what day can we bring this back? We can do June. I can do June 15th. All right. So we're going to recall it back for June 15th. Yes, and Ms. Ferguson, if you will again, just let them know that there's no need for an informal inquiry. The court is requesting that the evaluation be done. Okay. All Thank right. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. On um, Genevieve Pintor. Who's the attorney for Genevieve Pintor? All right, Pinter, come forward. All right, so um, there's a request for early um, termination on your case. I'm not inclined to give you early termination. I mean, what you did was awful. And there's a concern with you working with the elderly, which is what I put in here, that you're not allowed to um, have any work with vulnerable persons, any elderly people. So you want uh, to be terminated early. Why should I do that? I mean, yes, I understand what I did was wrong. Um, But I've never violated probation. I've never failed a drug test. I hold a steady job. And it's not even in the medical field anymore. I have, I mean, I've been doing good. I know what I did. I just want to put this past me and then just you know, move forward with myself, better myself or my kids and myself. Kids or baby goats. I wish people would stop. My using- children. Thank you. I wish people would stop using the word kids for children. Um, the complainant wants to move forward too, but you know why the complainant can't really move forward? They don't have their engagement ring. So where's their engagement ring? I'm not sure. Find their engagement ring, and then maybe I'll consider early termination. It was, I mean, I don't know what they said, what happened with it, but I know it was, it, from my understanding, it was pawn, in the pawn shop or something. Well, I mean, this is an engagement ring that you're responsible for. So what do you mean? You're saying your understanding that it was pawned in the pawn shop. You're acting like some phantom did that. Who pawned it in the pawn shop? Myself. All right. So where is their engagement ring? They want their engagement ring. You keep, you're before me saying you want your probation terminated early because you're ready to move on with your life. She wants her engagement ring. And since this is an elderly person, that means that that engagement ring, they probably had it since who knows where, how long. And that engagement ring costs that person $15,000. And how much did you pawn it for? I don't even remember. It's been a few years now. Yeah. See, here's the thing. You commit a crime. And for you, it's like, oh, I'm done. I don't even remember. No, it's not. I'm not I'm not giving you early termination. You're going to do every bit of the eight years that you're on for this probation. And you need to sit and think about 
the engagement ring that you stole from an elderly person when they allowed you into their home to take care of them and you went and pawned it and you're walking around enjoying your best life wearing eyelashes that are too long. I don't know why people are doing that. I think that's a new style or something, but no. So you are not going to be off of probation early. So probation, please tell probation officers to quit submitting me documentation, asking for her to be taken off early. I'll only truly consider taking you off probation early if you return her $15,000 engagement ring that you took to some pawn shop and they probably gave you maybe $200 for it. She wants her engagement ring back and you should want her to have it back. And then until you internalize what you did to her, an elderly person allowing you into their home to work and you're stealing their engagement ring, you have learned nothing on probation. That's all. The answer is no. Judge Court is calling 2022 <laughs> CR 10884, State of Texas versus Armando Mata. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Jason, you're ahead, Your Honor. Defense? Alfonso Otero on behalf of Mr. Mata. Are you Armando Mata? Yes, ma'am. All right, have both parties received the PSI report, state? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Judge. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report, state? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Judge. Any objections to the PSI report, state? No, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Judge. There is a uh... There's a question, I don't remember the page, but uh, whatever they asked Mr. Mata, if he had a drug problem, uh, the PSI uh, reflects that he said, not at all. I spoke to him about it. And what he understood at the time was that uh, if he was doing drugs at the time, the PSI was. And so we request that uh, that may be changed or corrected to reflect the Mr. Mata's true um, meaning of that answer good all right that will be noted uh any witnesses from the state no you are any witnesses from the defense yes judge oh she was and you have any witnesses yes judge but she's in the classroom oh okay is that your only witness yes judge all right then uh as soon as your witness comes back we'll continue oh thank you sure sorry about that oh no problem 2022 CR 10884. And uh, defense, you were calling a witness? Yes, Judge. Defense called Elizabeth Mata. All right. Could you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So I'll help you, God. Yes, ma'am. All right. You can lower your hand. I'm going to need you to speak up. Okay. All right. State your name for the record. Elizabeth Mata. All right. Uh, thank you, Judge. Ms. Mata, what's your relationship with uh, Mr. Mata? He's my son. And uh, currently, where is he living now? He's living with me. And uh, are you aware that he may have a drug addiction problem? And when did you learn about his drug addiction problem? Um, his whole addiction problem started in um, around 2009 when he uh, was involved in a motorcycle accident. He broke his knee and his hip and he was prescribed um, was called morphine in the hospital. And then when he was released, he was prescribed oxycodone, and that's when all his problems started. Okay, and uh, but after using those uh, medically prescribed medication, he has started doing illegal drugs. Heart analysis. And uh, um, who lives there with you and, and him? Just me and him. Okay, and where you live at? We live in the middle. Does he have a job right now? He's uh, actively looking for a job, but he's got one job already lined up, but he wanted to get this out. Sorry. Okay. Do you think he may benefit from drug treatment? Yes. Has he ever been in drug, tre drug yes. treatment? Yes. And when? I don't remember the years, but um, he's had like two, two stints and, and we have, but of course, if you don't have insurance, they, unless you're court ordered, it's not, they're not going to keep you. Okay. Um, and if he's granted probation, would you be um, willing to help him do anything he's got to do to complete those. Of course. Mm -hmm. No more questions, Judge. Any questions? No questions. All right. Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, defense, any more witnesses? No, Judge. All right. Then the court, uh, the state is silent. The court will hear our argument. Yes, Judge. Uh, the defendant, I, we acknowledge that he has a long criminal history. 
uh, he has a long history of uh, criminal arrests, uh, only one felony conviction we can see in the PSI as a couple of misdemeanor convictions. Uh, he does not show any uh, propensity to violence. Um, reading the history of the defendant, we can uh, assume that he has a addiction problem to drugs. Uh, he has been on parole for a while. Uh, his uh, parole officer has also recommended that he be on probation. They think that that may be beneficial to him. He has complied with probation, not probation, parole, I'm sorry, uh, besides picking up these cases, Judge. Um, I spoke to him about uh, what has motivated him to do this and what he's telling me is that he is a heavy user of meth and Karen. Um, those two things are very dangerous on, you know, on people very addictive, uh, very hard to break those uh, addictions. Uh, he's willing to change his life, uh, move on, finish his education and turn his life around. I've talked to him about it to um, what would it be, he, what he would be willing to do in order to accomplish those things and he is, agreeable to do any treatment that the court may um, order him to do. Um, other than that, Judge, I think he's got a heavy uh, problem about drug usage and he could benefit from uh, maybe failing the drug court if he's eligible for it or any type of probation, including a uh, treatment. Um, other than that, Judge, I, we will <laughs> ask the court to grant probation. All right, Mr. Um, Mata, I've looked at your criminal history. I just don't go by criminal history. I go by other things as well. I've listened to your mother testify. And also, I always uh, review again the stipulations. And you had a large amount of drugs. You understand? Yes, ma'am. So the court is going to... Uh, Without your application, support will find you guilty. Take in consideration 2022 CR 10885. County court cause number 692-603, 692-604, 692-605. Court will sentence you to five years in the prison. Give you credit for any time served. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. And also because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question of a weapon or ammunition, you need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. All right. If you have a problem with a drug or alcohol issue, I can ask that you can refer to the therapeutic community. The therapeutic community does not increase the length of time that you're in custody, but I can't force them to place you in it. But if you request it, they can consider and they'll see that I recommended it. Do you have any objections to that? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. Caroline, could you put in that therapeutic community? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Maybe excuse. Yes.